What are cryptographic failures? Well, they are the number two web app vulnerability that we see out there in the wild. And in this video, I wanna give you the TLDR of exactly what it is, breaches that have been caused because of it, and how we can prevent it. But before we get into that, just take two seconds to please subscribe to this channel and like this video. It helps the Google algorithm gods know that this is good content. All right, let's get into it. As the name suggests, it's when we fail to encrypt something securely and someone else can access sensitive information. But how does this really happen? It typically revolves around four different failings. Use of weak or deprecated cryptographic algorithms, poor key management, lack of encryption around sensitive data, insecure transmission of data, or improper implementation of cryptographic protocols. Now this all sounds really complicated, but when you boil it down, it's really not. Let's start with that first one, weak or deprecated cryptographic algorithms. This is probably the most common area that we see out there in the wild. And I'll give you a concrete example. When we store passwords, we don't store them in plain text. That would be dumb. We create a hash. And the idea is that you can never get back to the original password from that hash. However, there are hashing algorithms that were popular that are now known to be insecure. The most common is MD5. If you are hashing your passwords in MD5, that's basically useless. But there's still lots of applications that use algorithms like MD5 to hash these passwords, which is insecure and a cryptographic failure. I'll give you a great example. There was a company called FreeCycle in the UK, and they had a significant breach, which gave them the user IDs, username and email addresses and hashed passwords of all of their users. Now this is a bad breach, but it wouldn't be the worst because the passwords were hashed, which meant that the attacker shouldn't have been able to access them. However, take a guess of what happened. They had used the MD5 algorithm to hash them. Another area of cryptographic failure is poor key management. Now, cryptographic keys are just like any other secrets like API keys or passwords, where they can be very, very sensitive, which means we don't want to hard code them and we need to manage them correctly. But often people fail to do this, which leaves their encryption keys either out there exposed in their source code, in their Git repositories, places like that, or simply in their application for others to find. I have a personal example that I can share with you on this. I was stuck in Paris for the COVID lockdown in 2020. We had an application where we had to put in our information every time we wanted to leave home. Now, I had a look at the code of this application and the information, our personal information was being encrypted. Kudos to Paris. However, the exact same line that that information was being encrypted, they had hard coded the encryption key, which meant that the data was kind of pointlessly being encrypted. So not so good on that one, Paris. So how do we ensure we don't have cryptographic failures? Well, there's a number of things that we can do, starting with making sure you're using the correct and updated versions of encryption algorithms. This means that we never use something like MD5 to hash passwords. We don't use TLS 1.2 or lower, and we definitely don't use SSL 2.0 or SSL 3.0, as these are also, despite being very popular, have pretty big vulnerabilities within them. Another area is to make sure that we are encrypting everything that we need to. We're never storing passwords in plain text and we're adding the correct encryption layers using those correct algorithms. Finally, we wanna make sure that we never hard code passwords and we have good key management of where we store these API keys, passwords, and other credentials. This means using something like secrets managers and making sure that they never end up in our source control or anywhere else unsecured. If you want to find out more about preventative measures, you can check out the OWASP top 10 cryptographic failures for a little bit more information. But finally, there are some great tools that can help you prevent this. Namely, SAST, Static Application Security Testing. This will look through your source code and find any outdated algorithms that you're using and alert you to them. We can also use something like DAST, Dynamic Application Security Testing, to attack our application and find out if there are any security flaws that we can find from the outside. We also wanna make sure that we're scanning for secrets using something like a secrets detection. Now this includes your history, not just your top level code. And if we want to go further, we can even implement some kind of cloud management tools to ensure that everything is up to date and we have the correct permissions and encryption on our assets like our data buckets. If you're looking for some open source tools to help you to do this, I have some links down below of tools that I really like that are open source. Or if you're looking for a one-stop shop, I'd really recommend checking out the Aikido product suite because this will enable you to be able to implement all of what we just talked about for free immediately with just a few clicks. 
I hope you found this video useful. Make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. It helps the Google gods understand that this is good content and I can keep creating it. And I can also keep my job, which is, you know, like a plus. So I hope you enjoyed it and I hope to see you in the next video.